why Allah sets out miseries and atrocities, whether they may be international on the international level or whether they may be personal level. Why? Why does it happen to us? The first reason is that this is a source to show Allah your position that you deserve in heaven. Why? How? Allah knows where you belong before you were born. What position you know? What this position you belong in heaven? Allah knows it. But this is a method to prove yourself. Allah is just on the judgment day. Every single deed you did has to have a witness for it. The book, the angel, the ground you played on, the people who heard you, everything has to have a witness. So, if we're all going to pray five times, if we're all going to pay zakat, if we're all going to pay hajj, and we're all doing the same thing, how is Allah going to divide the 100 ranks in heaven upon us? If there isn't tests and tribulations to see who those are patient, to raise and boost their places in heaven. وَلِيُمَحِّسَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Pull out the pure, the ones who are patient in times of tribulation. لِيَمِيزَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّرِ Leave مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah is not going to leave the believers in the situation they're in. Meaning, this is not going to leave everything going, floating in your direction. Something got to happen. Why Allah? لِيَمِيزَ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّرِ So we can distinguish the true one from the evil one. The one who belongs in the position with the Siddiqin up there and the one who belongs in the first level. We have to know all that. أَمْ حَسِبْتُ مَنْ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ Do you think you're unto heaven when Allah knows who those are patient on and those who are martyrs on? You think you're going to enter heaven when you had a smooth life and you compare your life to one who had struggled for the sake of Allah or even Regular struggles in life, all that you get ajr for. The second reason behind these trials and tribulations is to show you this is not your life. If everything goes smooth, if you live in a country, you're a terrorist, you stay there 10 days, and everything that goes smooth for you, you love that world. The part of it. You always talk about the best days of my life. Right? You don't think of leaving it. It's the same with this life. If everything goes smooth in this life, it's hard for you to depart it. If everything goes smooth in this life, it's hard for you to think about heaven. You will think, how could you think about heaven when everything is going smooth for you? How could you? It has to have problems to make you think about heaven. You have to. Third reason. So you can ask and beg and please Allah to make you closer to Allah. The best time, the most time. Look at it. Think of it. The most time people turn to Allah when? When everything's going good, they don't even go by the message when everything's going good. When they have problems, is then they pick up the phone, well, the shaykh, I have a problem. That's the only time they call the shaykh, when they have a problem. When their family is dead, when they have a dead relative, his father's in front of him dead, his son is in front of him dead, the heart is tied and needs something to grasp on. And that's when their weak spot will come, Allah uses this to take people back to How many people do we know that we can guide it over the death of a relative one? That changed their life. How many? Hundreds. You probably all know examples yourself of a misery that happened to someone and it changed their whole life. These are among the reasons why Allah tests us. Look at this example and every time you face a trial, a tribulation in this life, you got to look at it. If someone Takes you, you, you get up to pray, you put your back back in the end of the masjid, and someone steals it. Don't go shedding tears and crying. If you leave the masjid, your window's broken. It's a problem. You leave, someone hits you on the red light. It's a problem. If you travel, if you're speeding, you get a ticket, it's a problem. Some people, 
Çıksanlar o fazlama gire. They weep and shed and they probably can't sleep over the night. And they're depressed. Give you the example of one man. And you, 80 years of his life, he lived the most smoothest, best life anyone can live. 14 kids, a good life, happy with his wife, messenger of Allah. What more could you ask? In a matter of days, it all changed. It flipped around. How? This messenger of Allah, Ayyub, gets a disease. His skin changes. Not only that, 14 of his kids die one after the other. Not of this. He handled it with iman and patience. The verse we mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah, with patience and prayer, he handled it. His way, make dua. Let us, if he makes a dua, just raises his hand and says, Ya Allah, Allah is going to respond. Make dua. No. How many years did we live, he tells his wife, in good, luxurious manner? 80 years. She said, 80 years. He said, when we live another 80 years in a misery, then I'll raise my hands to Allah and ask for dua. 80 and 80. The years went on where she had to work as a maid from the luxury she was in to the maid. The maid she's in. Make dua, refuse it until he reaches a point where she has to serve her hair. They used it for uh, the battlefield, in the battlefields for some things that they needed. She sold her hair to keep supporting that man. That she is her messenger of Allah Ayyub. That's when he raised his hand and he made dua. Allah on the spot responded. How many years of this misery that no one can handle. Disease that left no one would talk to him. No one would come near him. No one would come near his town. People were beginning to shun his wife thinking she is contagious with that disease. And that disease is going to spread upon him. Not only him, his wife too. 14 kids. Not a single why me? Why did it have to happen to me? Why myself? No! Patience! What happens? Rabbi inni massani adhur wa antar One line or dua. Rabbi inni massani adhur. Oh Allah! A hardship fell upon me. And you're the all merciful, the graceful. What does Allah say? فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ We took the evil, the problem that happened to him out. We gave him that which was there before and double. You know what that means? 14 kids. When his wife walked upon him after he was cured from the disease, she said, who are you? The disease covered his body so much, she didn't know who he was when she walked upon him. When he was cured, Allah gave him not 14 kids for being patient those 18 years, but 28 kids. أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُ مَعْهُمْ Double that. Rahmatan minna. Mercy of Allah because of those 18 years of patience. One more story of Qais ibn Asim al Munkari. Keep it between your eyes. It's two stories. When you have a problem, laugh at them. Those more problems that we have, laugh them out. They're nothing compared to these stories that we have over here. This is the solution to your problem. When you have a problem, you turn to Allah. When you have a problem, you say, Alhamdulillah. 18 years with a skin disease and 14 kids, a feeding ticket, what's the stuff of feeding ticket? You overlook it like nothing is going to happen. A car stolen, whatever it may be. You didn't get accepted to the university. You got fired from a job. All these are normal things when you compare it to 18 years. Look at this man, Qais ibn Asim al munkari Qais ibn Asim had a disease. It was spreading in his foot. And he's a bad guy. They said, we got to cut your foot. He said, no, your knee, no, it grew up. The disease, he said, if we don't cut it now, you're going to die. He said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Go ahead. He said, here's alcohol. They have no medicine to cure him. So they said, here's alcohol for you. He said, alcohol? He has excuse. Islam gives him excuse. He's in a hardship. He has to. They said, Allah prohibited something. And Allah gave me a mind. And I use that to take away my mind. No. Wait till I pray. Surakat. When I'm in the rak'ah, that you feel me floating with Allah's verses, His mind, His power is in is not in this world. It's in the heaven, in the hell, in the gardens of heaven, in the luxuries of the light after, laughing with the good pleasures of heaven, crying with the, the, the stories of hell. What does He say? When I, when you feel me floating with those verses, cut my leg off. He cut it off when He was praying. He tapped up. 
not a single moan, he'll never cut in it. He didn't feel it. His mind wasn't there. His mind was with Allah. He didn't feel it. But he passes out from the blood. When he wakes up, in the coma he was in, his son died. Listen to this. And keep it in your mind. And teach it to your kids and to your brothers. When there's a time of hardship, he wakes up. He says, may Allah give you better than what he took from you. He said, what? What did Allah say? He said, your leg. He said, my leg. What else? He said, your son. He had a son, four sons. One of them died in his coma. He didn't add. The narrator of the hadith said, he didn't add more than say, Alhamdulillah, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. And you know what he said? He said, give me my leg. He looked at his leg. And you know, this is funny what he did. He looked at his leg and he kissed it. That's not the stunning part. The stunning part is he said, Wallahi, I never used this leg to walk for a sin ever. How many of us could say that? How many of us could say that? Wallahi, I never used that hand. Wallahi, I never used that leg to walk for a sin ever. Wallahi, this heart story melts a heart if it was a heart of a rock. I never used this leg. Wallahi, how many of us could say that today? And then he said, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me four body parts. Look at the patience in this man. Allah gave me four body parts. He took one. I got three left. Allah's been generous to me. Look how generous. I got three. I got one hand left. I got two hands left. And one leg. Allah's been generous. I got one kid that Allah took his life. I have four kids. Allah is so generous to me. He loves me with three kids. Allah Akbar. This is the patience. This is the patience that Allah says, Glory! وَبَشِّرُ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ يا فارس القدس هيا تعجل وشمر عن الزند حوا أبيا لساح المنايا صراعا ترجل وقارع بصدرك ريحا عتيا تناديك أحجار قص الطهارا فلب النداء بكرة وعشيا